Hello. All right, so this is a video tutorial on how to get the input that you're pressing, or at least understand how to get the input that you're pressing in like a direction. And this is mainly just a tutorial that a friend of mine asked me to do. And I was like, hey, I can do that. And uh, he's making this awesome game. His name is iDreadman. He's making this awesome game called Buff. I'm gonna put a link to the latest dev update in the description. Go check it out, it's a really cool game. Um, basically you fight like a bunch of buff dudes. That's, that's kind of, that's a short, small synopsis of what I know of the game. <laughs> All right. So, um, hit play. This is an example. I turned off the movement so that way you can see what I mean. So I'm pressing forward or W on my keyboard. This is using just the generic third person template and I'm rotating my camera and it's pointing to the direction I'm trying to move in. And if I press right at the same time, then it's going to do both of them combined. If I press right, it'll show right. And backwards, left, that kind of thing. Sorry, my phone's going nuts. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this on just the third-person template and to understand how to do this on your own project if you have your own, like, customized version or whatever of getting just, like, the input. You're not getting, like, the velocity that you're moving in or anything. You just want to know which direction you're trying to move in or the player is trying to press to move in. All right, so I'm going to switch back to the third-person character which is the default character. And now we can move around. Sorry, the, the camera was just kind of panned back so you could see what I mean. So we're gonna do it in here, okay? So first things first, we need to know the inputs that are happening. So rather than making a float for either one, we're gonna use a vector 2D. So I'm gonna name this input uh, directions. And we're gonna name this vector 2D, there it is compile save and then we're gonna drag this in here we're gonna split the struct because we're gonna do this on both of them so we could do it two ways this is one of the ways or what we could do is on tick um, set it and then split the struct here and then what we can do is right click and get the input axis that it is here so move right and move forward if you don't see this, that means your, your input axis is named differently. It's tied to whatever is in your project settings for that input axis. So if you go to project settings, input, and then in your axis mappings, that those are the ones you can pull from pretty much. Okay. And you could just like, uh, for forward, it's always going to be the Y because it's going forward and backwards. And then X is going to be left and right. So we're going to be moving right like that or we can do it up here. So I'm gonna show you the both examples. So I'm gonna do this hit error. And then, oh yeah, so move forward pretty much, it would be, you can do it this way or, and we're gonna leave the tick there because we're gonna use it later just for the example of showing you how to get the direction um, and to show a little arrow and stuff. All right, so move forward, uh, that's gonna be on the Y. So we just need the X to be the same so we're only changing the y value all right and we're gonna copy and paste these over here because it's doing the same thing but the opposite values so this time it's going to be the y direction needs to be the same and then we're only changing the x here so they'll both be updating their own respective values and not affecting each other or you can do the tick version which is you know only in one spot versus like two of them all right so one thing that you're going to know you need to know or understand is that when you're pressing these inputs, they're always going to be a uh, positive one, zero or negative one for this axis value. All right. So imagine whatever vec when you're adding input or movement input to your pawn, it pretty much is being multiplied by a direction. So that direction multiplied by one is going to be that direction, you know, just no change. If you multiply it by zero, it's going to be zero because anything multiplied by zero will be zero. And then if you multiply it by negative one, then that value is going to be the opposite direction. So in this case, getting forward vector, that's going to be our forward direction. If we multiply it by negative one, it'll be our backwards direction. And same with the right. If it's positive one, it'll be right. If it's zero, it's not moving. If it's negative one, then it's going to be moving in the left direction or multiplied by that. So it's going to be, if it's multiplied by negative one, then it's going left kind of thing. 
all right? So at this point, we have everything set up, but this is just a workflow reason. We're going to copy this, this little bit of code and we're gonna make our little function for get um, movement directions and we're gonna paste it in here. The reason why is so that we can reuse the function and just drag it in and be like, here's our forward, here's our right direction, and we don't need to change it in every other spot. So in here, we're gonna drag out of this, return node, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the right vector on top, mainly because this will be our X value. So right direction underscore X. And then we're gonna plug in our forward direction. And this is gonna be forward direction underscore Y, just to like leave a little messages like this is X, this is Y, all right? So this is the case where in your version of, the pro of your own projects or whatever, however you're moving and the directions and stuff like that, this would be the function that you would fill that information into and then you just reuse this function. All right, so we're gonna click on either the return node or the input node. We're gonna click this drop down, and we're going to go to set it to pure and then const. So that way, when we drag it in, we're just getting it. So if we drag it in, see? We don't have an execution pin. All right, so over here, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the example that I was, let's also replace these. So our right direction is gonna be this one, because this is moving right and the Y is gonna be up here. Sorry, it's a little cross-wired right now, so we can delete these. Yeah, sorry, it's a little cross-wired, so we can just move these up like this, and then, let me fix this up. Like that. And even then, we could probably just move it like this, the way it was before. There we go. All right, so that's a little bit more organized looking. And then over here, we're gonna do right click and draw debug arrow just for an example, okay? You can do whatever you want at this point because you've got the input directions and now I'm gonna show you how to make sure you're getting the right values. So get actor, actor location. And we're gonna plug that into our line start because that's where our, our arrow's gonna start at. I'm gonna plus a vector so that way we can pretty much when we show the line end it's gonna start from our our actor and then it's gonna end in a direction that's like you know aligned with our that's moving with our actor all right so over here we're gonna multiply this by a float all right and we're gonna duplicate that again and we're gonna duplicate these two again so this is gonna be our distance for the arrow. We don't need this one, so this is optional. And let me, so our value is gonna be 500, so it's gonna be a really long arrow. Actually, let's do 250, make it a little bit shorter. And when we add the pins, I'm gonna plug these two to add up. And the reason why we're adding both of these is because when we add the X direction, it's only, right now we're only showing the X, and if we show the Y, it's adding both of them combined. And typically it's gonna be uh, zero and one for either zero or one or negative one for either of these values. So if it's zero, that means we're only gonna be getting one value and you know, it'll just handle itself pretty much. It's kind of combining it, the two directions so that way we can use them without having to go like add these, add this separately and then combine it with this. And it's just a little bit more efficient to read and everything. All right, so our arrow size is going to be 500. Our duration is going to be 0 0.02, and thickness will be 2.5. And let's change the line color so we can see it. It can be whatever color you want. All right, so we've got everything except one more thing, our input direction. This will handle telling us, like, hey, our, we're pressing something in the right direction, and we're pressing something in the forward. So we're going to split this struct. Or if you're using two floats, you can just plug them into these. So right direction X, we're gonna plug X into that. And right and forward direction Y, we're gonna plug Y into that. So I'm gonna do this, and then we're gonna hit play. 
and I press forward, there's a little arrow and it's following us. I press right, it's going to the right and left and it's rotating with us. This is pretty much using our movement direction that we're trying to move in and we have the direct, we basically have like a, what we've created with this float value, well this vector 2D, but it's really two floats. What we've created with this is essentially a flag that handles if we're going forward, backward, that kind of thing, we know because it's always going to be 0, 1, or negative 1 based on the inputs. And one thing you can also do is when you're feeding this in is make sure it's clamped between negative 1 and 1. So this will account for, no, let me move this out a little bit so it's easier to see. Uh, this goes in Y. Yeah, so pretty much this will account for if you're pressing two buttons at the same time that do the same direction. So in this case, if I press move forward, so I have, I have my arrow keys and then I have my W key. So if I was just using the regular raw input, it would actually output to two. So I want you to pay attention to the length of the arrow. See? So I'm pressing forward and W at the same time. So if I plug this in, And if I press W and then forward on the arrow, it keeps it clamped at that same value of 1. So when you're feeding them in, you just make sure it's clamped between negative 1 and 1. This was also something that in the Unreal Tournament days, they had to fix it for later games because they forgot to clamp it. So if you were going in a direction, if you were pressing uh, two buttons and stuff like that, you could actually move faster. <laughs> so yeah. That's a little fun little trivia for you. So yeah, that's how you get the direction, the movement direction at least. Uh, based And you can kind of like modify the code for your own game as well, really just, you know, adjusting the function for what it outputs. In this case, since I'm using the generic third person template, we're just adjust, we're just using, you know, the control rotations, uh, right vector and forward vector. But however you're basically adding uh, to the movement input, that's the world direction is basically what you're going to be sort of making into the function part or like bringing into that function. So you, you can modify this and then it'll just kind of globally affect it everywhere that's using your movement direction and kind of helps, you know, make it easier on your life. But uh, yeah, also please check out Buff, uh, my friend's game Buff. It's pretty good. Bye.